So as requested in this video, I want to look at exchange rates. So now, what is exchange rate? Exchange rate is the value of one currency in terms of another currency. So in term, so we might look at the value of the pound in terms of, let's say, the dollar, and that might be two dollars to one pound. Or you might look at the pound in terms of euros, that might be one and a half euros to a pound. You know, but whatever. There's all various types of exchange rates. And now, exchange rates is basically treating money like an object. Okay, now, if, if we have rulers, okay, we can have demand and supply of the rulers. And as for microeconomics, you know, if demand increases, there's only a limited supply, price increases. If demand decreases, there's too much supply, um, then they're going to have to reduce prices to attract consumers the same way as we just talked about demand supply so um, if supply increases we have a lot of them how are we going to flog them keep them cheap prices or if supply decreases but there's still that same demand then you're going to have to increase prices so it's the same with exchange rates if um, we have the, uh, the pound and then we have uh, foreign investors who want to buy UK products they have to change their money into a pound hence they demanding the pound the value of the pound will go up same with people investing in the UK they have to convert whatever currency they are into pounds to invest here so they are basically demanding pounds to do that and speculators well they both increase and decrease supply because They'll go and they'll see how can I make money out of exchange rates. So that's basically what speculators do. On the supply side of exchange rates, if we want to buy foreign products or imports or foreign houses or something, we have to convert the pounds into their currency. So we might have to convert the pounds into euros to buy our second home in Spain. So this means that there's excess su supply pound in the um, economy because we've changed to euros to buy that house and therefore supply increases if we invest abroad we have to change our money from let's say pounds to euros that means there's a lot of pounds floating around in the economy because you've given it back you're saying I don't want it because I want that so it's that kind of thing if think about it like a product and so what would happen is if we if do increase demand the pound would appreciate because um, the value of the pound would increase because as we know as demand increases price increases it's a positive correlation so whereas with supply if supply decreases because you know everybody's got it there's just not enough supply of the pound then um, if supply decreases then pound increases the value of the pound increases it appreciates there whereas if supply increases there's a lot of it price will go down, it will depreciate. And we can see this on basically a simple, you have simple demand and supply diagram, but you just basically, instead of using it for ruler, or oil prices or whatever, you just got to use it for um, the pound. Okay, that's, that's basically how you calculate it. Now we have to look at the effects of um, um, the pound and then I can tell you a quick way and an exam to remember these effects but I'm going to try and explain it in my way so if the pound increases in value right so let's look at the scenario one the pound goes up in value suppose because um, uh, suddenly it's summer June July and loads of tourists want to come to the UK so they're all demanding the pound and the pound rises in value so what happens? If the pound rises in values, it makes exports seem expensive. Now, I might be making a jump here, but this is because um, a company in, let's say, New York, they buy rulers uh, from the UK. They import it. So before, in $4, they could buy two, uh, two rulers. Now, they still only have $4, but they can only buy one ruler because value of the pound the exchange rate has changed so for example if we say it was two dollars to one pound and the ruler was one pound so they'd have four dollars which would convert to two pounds they could buy two rulers now it's one pound to one um one pound to four dollars so they still only have four dollars but when they convert it they only get one pound back one ruler is one pound so they can only buy 
one ruler. So exports seem expensive in that way. So people will like cut down the amount they export. And on the contrary, we will import more because imports will seem cheap because suddenly with our pound we could get more euros and if we get more euros the price in the other country of wine or something is not going to change because of our exchange rate we can just go and we can buy more and we can import more now remember in the ad formula x minus m is a component if x decreases and then um, m increases we're left with a larger negative figure and aggregate demand will basically fall so and then from aggregate demand falling we know that we have less economic growth and we have inflationary pressures now this is the opposite for um, scenario two if the pound falls in value if the pound falls in value because let's say suddenly china is such cheap imports that all we're doing is we're spending money abroad so we're converting our money from pounds to I think it's yen or something I'm not really sure so we convert our money to that so there's a lot of extra pounds the economy's got nobody's using it because everyone wants to use yen to buy the um, imports from China so what happens exports will suddenly seem cheap because the value of the pound Will fall because it's excess supply so now uh, let's go back to our firm in the States instead of having um, two uh, two dollars to one pound it might be one dollar to one pound and if it's one dollar to one pound and remember the rule is only one pound and they have four dollars that becomes four pounds instead of buying two or one rulers they can buy four because exports are cheap so more people we um, UK will be exporting more and um, um, exports will increase. Imports. Um, imports will seem expensive because if we now go to, instead of, if we're going to import stuff, for for example, from the States, let's go back to one pound to one dollar. That's how much the pound has fallen. So we, the um, companies in the States, they're not going to change their prices for us, are they? No, so they're going to stay the same and they'll probably be higher because generally um, the value of the dollar is less than the value of the sterling. So we can only import a certain amount because our um, money is limited. So what effect does this have? Exports increase, imports decrease, this leaves us with a larger figure. This means aggregate demand will increase and if aggregate demand increases, economic growth increases and um, uh, there's inflationary pressures. Okay, yeah, that's my mistake. Sorry, when I said aggregate demand falls, then so does price level. And then when aggregate demand increases, there's inflationary pressures. My mistake, sorry. Now, the um, mnemonic I've put on my blog is called SPICED. Now, this stands for strong price exports, no, strong price imports cheap, exports dear. So, all you need to remember a strong pound the pound is appreciates and rather than going through the formula of what happens and working out you just know that imports become cheaper and exports become expensive and then you know that if it's a weak pound then imports will become more expensive and exports will become cheaper so that was basically the mnemonic I put up I'm sorry if this video hasn't been too much of a help because it's quite a funny area. I'll try and put some notes up on my blog. But anyways, I hope this helps and please visit my blog.